What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Now we are gonna go over the same thing pretty much because the Triple Qs didn't really do anything over the past couple days, but are we going to finally get this rejection? We are hitting resistance right now. And if we actually do get this resistance, a lot of these Mega 7 companies, especially GameStop, NVDA, you know, pretty much everything. You're gonna see the 10 year pop up. You're gonna see crude oil pop up. Are we gonna get this drop in the Triple Qs? Let's go over it. And guys, if you have it, the link is in the description or in the comments of the video. Guys, we are doing great this week. We are up 65% on the trades. Next week, we are aiming for 120%. If you want to come in, the link is in the comments or in the description of the video. Come in. I mean, if you just want to kick it and just talk to me, hey, come in. Talk to me. Let's chill. All right, guys. What's up? Welcome back to the channel. Now, it is like 3 a.m. in the morning, so, I, you know, things can change before open or after open. But I am going to go over the charts and show you what's going on in the market, especially the indexes, especially the 10-year. The 10-year is, oh, man, I wish I had this opportunity. If I had like $3 million right now, I would be hugging TLT right now. But just wanted to go over the charts and update you guys because I know a lot of you guys are probably asking questions. So we're just going to go over it and, yeah, pretty much just go everything. So right now, what we need to focus on is pretty much the SP500. The SP500 is pretty much just consolidating right now now let's actually zoom in a little bit more I'm gonna try to get this off now a lot of these indexes are pretty much at the top of their channels and honestly it's building a sideways channel now the biggest thing that you need to pay attention is this support right here if this channel breaks it is absolutely going to go a lot lower than what we did back you know a couple weeks ago if the SP 500 channel breaks you already have the triple Qs and the NAS and the SPY already, they already broke their channel. So they're just pretty much trading sideways right now, waiting for the SP500. But the thing is, the SP500 is big and it's probably not gonna do anything until after NVDA because that's, you know, it's kind of common sense usually. You know, I don't think there's gonna be a drop right before NVDA's split, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, the actually the split on NVDA is only one to 10 now. So I'm gonna show you the charts on that because it's gonna to go to support. And then it's on the 10th also. It's not on the 7th no more. I don't know why they change it all the time at the very end, but yeah. But yeah, if we can break this channel in the SP500, it is absolutely gonna to go to support again. And if it does go to support again, you're talking about you know probably 430, 425 in the triple Qs. So if we do actually do get this rejection in the SP500, you need to pay attention of around, around 5100. And then also if we go to the uh, NAS, if we get that rejection in the SP500, you're going to look at support of on the NAS around 17,970. And then on the triple Qs, if we get that rejection on the, on the SP500 and then on the NAS, you're going to see probably the triple Qs go down to around three, around 434, something like that. It's really not that much, honestly. $25 in the, S, in the triple Qs right now, that, that's not much at all. That's that's really easy to hit but the thing is it's this there's so much room right here in all the indexes so that's what's pretty much going to hold us up so just throwing that out there i don't think we're going to go past 430 for a while probably for probably in, probably until the end of next month that's pretty much when these charts get to fill out it's going to be something like that so if we do ever get a break like this in the indexes it's going to be a bloodbath but not anytime soon now if spy does go to support also you're looking around a 503 and then also the dow is pretty much just floating at support it's just waiting for the other indexes but you are finding support around 38,000 you know 300 and then also on the russell support will be around 197 so yeah and then also if you've been a long-term viewer or if you're a new you know guy give me a like it helps out a ton and if you haven't sub to the channel because you know these levels hit it's not really hard now there is one thing that you do need to pay attention to it is the triple q e the triple q e is not doing that good actually i'm going to pull up the moving averages because we kind of need to see it now check this out look at the moving averages it's really really close so if the, if we actually do get a drop to say 440 in the triple q's the triple QE is going to go lower and it's gonna stay below the, the 20 and 50 moon average. So just throwing that out there. And then also, if you are trading crypto, I say this, I can't say this enough, honestly. I just, I, this is probably one of the worst things that people don't understand and which I understand it's crypto. You know, you got two things in the market, 
But if we get a rejection in the triple Qs, say to support, because here's the rally, here's the drop, here's the rally. Now, if you go to Bitcoin, it's literally the same thing. Here's the big rally, here's the drop, and here's the rally. So if we get that rejection to 430 in the triple Qs, you will see Bitcoin probably fight around 63,000 or 58,000. It's really gonna depends. It really depends where the index is and them find support. You'll find support in Bitcoin. But check this out, guys. The 10 year is finding support. It's finally buying, you know, finding pressure in the market. Now it is finding a lot of buying support right here. But if we can get above this support, that's when it takes off. So unless if the 10 year yield gets above around 4.4%, it's really just gonna flow and build a bottom. But the thing is, every time it taps a bottom, like right here, or right here, or right here, I mean, even right here, or right above the 50, or down here, this thing takes off. And if this takes off, it's going to absolutely push the market down. Same thing with DXY. DXY is pretty much finding support. It's waiting on the 10 year. Now, if it does get above the 20 and 50 moving average, it is gonna probably take off. You can see it from like, you know, right here, or when it bounced on right here, or when it, you know, it. The 50 and the 20 moving average is fire. I really highly suggest using it if you don't use it. Now on the VIX, it's pretty much sitting on the 20 moving average, but it's really not gonna do anything until you start seeing you know, pressure in the triple Qs and the other indexes and stuff like that. Now TLT, if you are trading the 10 year yield, well, if you're trading TLT, you're pretty much trading the 10 year yield, but yeah, um, this is a very good exit point, um, not financial advice, but the 10-year yield is past support, and when it starts to pump, it's going to absolutely push the triple Qs down. So don't get trapped here buying shares or buying calls, because if the 10-year drops and start, or sorry, if the 10-year starts to pump, this is absolutely going to get destroyed to around 84. So just throwing that out there. But let's go over the Mega Seven. But Tesla's not a part of the Mega Seven. Yes, it is. It's it's always going to be a part. It's literally. 5.5% of the triple Qs and other indexes. They're, the market's not gonna be like, yeah, let's take Tesla out, let's sub that 5%. No, it's not gonna happen, ever. Well, it had changed over time, but yeah. But yeah, on the mega, on the meta, we are at resistance also. So look for a rejection here. And the one reason you can tell is because the indexes are at resistance. The 10 year yield is at support. DXY is at support. So if those start to pump and drop, you're gonna see Meta probably drop down to a 455. But definitely set a, an alert for Meta. If we do break, say, to like 380, this channel is gonna be broken and that's going to be a very big problem for the bulls. So just be very careful. Now on AMD, it's pretty much just floating at resistance. It's been doing that for the past couple weeks. It's pretty much waiting for the triple Qs to drop. And if it does drop, you are looking at support around 149. And then also on Tesla, it's doing the exact same thing as AMD. It's trading sideways, waiting for the triple Qs to drop and the other indexes. And when that does, you are looking at support around 142. So just be very careful. And the stock I highly suggest never touching because it is so toxic of trading sideways. I I would I I could I can't I will never touch Amazon again. Not after this last you know section this right here was absolutely just disgusting and it destroyed calls and puts because people just sat in it and decayed them now if you're like a day trader good job that you probably made a killing but yeah amazon found support bounce but if the triple q's start to drop you will see amazon drop to 71 and the thing is this channel is actually kind of fragile so just be very careful because if it ever does break the channel it is going to be a chaos for the bulls now one thing that is probably gonna break those channels and help them is NVDA, I'll show you in a second. Now, M uh, Apple, Apple is at the top of the channel. Be very, very careful with Apple. It is 13% of the triple Qs. It's the number one in the Russell. Um, it's like number two in uh, the NAS. I think Microsoft is number one, but you get what I'm saying. Apple is going to be a lot of the room and it's gonna be pretty much what pushes the market this next drop. So if you start to see Apple reject, remind yourself, look at every time we hit this level in Apple, it rejects hard. So just throwing that out there. Same thing with Microsoft. Microsoft is, I think, number one in the NAS. I can't remember, it's it's 3 a.m. But yeah, when the triple Qs and Apple rejects, you will see Apple, uh, Microsoft fight around 407. But here's the thing, guys, look at Microsoft. Microsoft is already filling out its channel 
and it really doesn't have that much room um, until next month early. So it could trade sideways the next month early. And I'm pretty much the indexes and everybody's gonna trade sideways until next month. And yeah, just throwing that out there. But if Microsoft can ever break this channel of around 405, it's gonna be a bloodbath. So be very careful. Um, if it does get a rally, you are looking at 434 as the top of the channel below the support. And then also on Google, Google's still floating. I It's just like another Amazon. I, I will not trade this, nope, nope. But this drop right here, this little drop right here is the exact same thing as this drop in the triple Qs last time. Let me delete that. So this little drop in the triple Qs is the exact same thing as this little drop in Google. Now this pump in the triple Qs is this pump in Google. But if we get a rejection in the triple Qs, this support is gonna get cracked and Google is probably gonna drop to around 152. Not right off the back, I'd probably drop to like 162. That's probably like a 430 in the triple Qs. But if uh, Google can drop, just remember Google is bigger than Tesla and all the other companies. It's like 5.5%, so just throwing that out there. Now, the question that everyone's been asking, why is NVDA pumping? Well, it's volume pretty much because of the stock split. Volume automatically pumps pretty much. You know, that's just how volume works. But check this out. So they're actually doing a one to 10 stock split. And I kind of want to actually talk about this. Let me load the charts. So one to 10, you're looking at, you know, 122 on the stock split, but check this out. So if we actually go down a little bit closer, now, if we get this stock split, it's gonna drop really hard, but look at this, 177 is support. So if we get that stock split, you're looking at 130, it's gonna be right here below support. So it could get another pump to around 170 when it does the stock split, but it's probably gonna find support. But here's the thing that I want to point out. When you get this stock split, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna drop, and it's gonna be below the support. Now, it's gonna play out two ways. It's either gonna bounce, actually, let me draw this up a little bit more. So around 120, 130. It's probably either going to bounce and probably do something like that where it'll come up, hit the bottom support, and then reject a little bit more because, you know, a real price for that will probably be around 60 when the triple Qs drop. So just throwing that out there, you know, that's just how it works. If the triple Qs drop, NVA is going to drop. So I don't see it bouncing and then going higher because that's just, that's, there's no way because the other mega six out of the seven is gonna fight NVDA. The indexes are gonna fight NVDA. The 10 year is gonna fight NVDA. So just be very careful if you are, are in NVDA, you need to probably take a step back. I would not be buying shares or calls out of 463 in the triple Qs. That I definitely would not. That's just straight gambling. But here's another thing, nine. Nine is on support. Um, don't expect nine to pump at all until um, the triple Qs drop and then you'll see 10 year pump and then you'll see crude oil pump and then you'll see nine pump. It'd be the late, it'd be the late part of the, of the chain reaction pretty much. But here's the thing, 160 is gonna probably be your average price of around 463 in the triple Qs. So this is probably gonna be a good area where it's probably gonna hold pretty much. So just throwing that out there. But what about GameStop? It pumped to $52 after hours. I say it every video follows the triple Qs. If you can't see it, um, you're gonna get trapped very fast. Here's the rally in GameStop and triple Qs right here. Now when uh, the triple Qs had that little drop, we had the drop in GameStop right before it because it's small cap, so it moved before the Mega 7. Now that last pump, it's just GameStop catching up. Now when the triple Qs does drop, you will see GameStop drop. No, this is not going to 100, this is not going to 200 you are playing with fire right now so just be very careful if you are in this and then there is one thing i do want to point out i called this out last time before we had the huge sell-off and this is actually what stopped us the last time look at the puts look at the puts last time when we before we had this i told you watch puts and calls and ratios. If we get a bunch of pressure, the market's going to trade sideways even longer to wait out those puts. And look what happened again. Now here's the thing though, we did get a lot of record puts, but we got it right back off. So pretty much that was a lot of day trading, 
but there's still a lot of people that are going long in these puts and the market's probably not gonna cash out this week. So expect we, this week to probably be slow in the market, um, trading sideways, and then probably look for movement next week in the market when there's more data coming out and all that good stuff. But I'm gonna be posting on the weekend, so make sure you sell the channel. And if you haven't liked the video, that helps me out a ton. But thanks guys, hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend coming up. And please, please don't drink and drive.